Hi there, welcome to Houston DIY, my name is Ben. Will the Mac Mini M4 work with the MetaQuest 3? Watch this video to find out. Okay, I've had the Mac Mini M4 base model for over, just over a week now. Uh, I'll link to the video within the intro video, unboxing, etc. for that up here somewhere. I've been using it now obviously over a week and it's an incredible, incredible PC. Really, really impressive. It's so glad I've got it. It's improved my video editing, just general use of my PC. I'm massively, really, really impressed. Now, I've done previous videos on the channel, which I will link to up here somewhere. I've got a playlist where we've covered the MetaQuest 3, different things you can do with it, connected to a PS5, Nintendo Switch, all sorts. And it got me thinking, can we make it work with this? Okay, because the Mac Mini has got the Thunderbolt ports on the back of it, it's obviously got USB-C connectivity for monitors. Now what we're going to do in this video is use a capture card. So this one here, I've got a Ugreen capture card. I've got many kinds of capture cards, we've covered a few on the channel. Again, I will link up here somewhere to those videos where I've gone through a different capture cards, using them with the MetaQuest 3, working out which is the best one. There are pros and cons for all of them. They all fundamentally do the exact same thing. Uh, on this one, we are using a Ugreen capture card. I will link to that below in the description. The reason I've gone for this particular uh, capture card is because it's a capture card with a USB-C cable that goes into the headset, that's USB-C, and then on the other end, all connected into one single kind of device as such, we've got another USB-C cable or USB-C port on the end of that, which is going to go into the actual Mac Mini M4. So we're going to output basically from USB-C into this capture card, then that will then plug into the MetaQuest 3 and we should, fingers crossed, see the Mac desktop inside the headset. So you could use this as a, instead of a monitor, as well as a monitor. Um, tons of different use cases for this. If you didn't have a big monitor, you've only got a small monitor and you want to watch things on a bigger screen, do work on a bigger screen, for example, you can have a massive HD screen in front of your eyes inside the MetaQuest 3. Fingers crossed, anyway. So let's get things connected up. I'll try and show you how we've connected them. And then, fingers crossed, we'll have um, the Mac OS desktop inside the MetaQuest 3. So let's jump in. Okay, it's a little bit of a mess on the desk here at the moment with the wires and cables, because I've stretched my Mac Minute back onto the desk. I did have it hidden kind of uh, down, just on some shelving down there. So at the moment, I've got it plugged in, I've got it plugged into this screen. What I've got here, let me just show you, I've got the mentioned capture card and cable, and I'm gonna plug that into the back of the Mac Mini now. So as you can see, I've got a USB-C connection into that monitor there. I'm gonna just plug a second USB-C connection, like that into there and that's going to plug into the headset now so i'll get the headset on and we'll do a recording inside the headset and fingers crossed it'll work okay here we are inside the headset hopefully you can see things going on the desk the imac's there uh, my camera's there i've got my normal screen here which is connected with a usb-c cable i've got my capture card plugged in here ready to plug into the headset so the way we're doing this inside the headset we're using the MetaQuest hdmi link application i've covered done a few videos on this application with the MetaQuest 3 connecting to different devices super super good use it for ps5 nintendo switch laptop phone all kinds of stuff so this is the moment we've got the usb-c cable here i'm going to plug it into the side of the headset just up here then fingers crossed we see some activity in the actual application. Okay, so it's detected it now. We need to give permissions, which we've done. And then we need to choose the uh, the format we're gonna use for the actual streams. You can see there you've got different options, different frame rate, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second below there. Um, so it's defaulted to 60. Let's go with that one for now. So we'll select it and then click on the start streaming button. There we go, so we've got it working there. You can see down the bottom, we've got the frame rate, we've got the connection there looking great. Super good quality, super, super good quality. Bigger screen then, kind of next to the screen, which looks really, really good, really, really clear. So at the moment, we just need to change the uh, monitor rules or the monitor positioning around. So I'll go into the settings of on the Mac into display and we can switch those around. You can see it's picked it up there, the U green one. We just need to arrange them. So we'll just switch them around and we should better then drag between the screens. Let's give that a go now. There we go. So if I take DaVinci Resolve, let's give that a go, which I use for editing. There we go. So it's onto the screen. Oops, let's try that again. So you can't make it full screen on there, which is a bit weird. Let's just drag it over and just show it there. But you can see, you can definitely use that. You've got the frames per second, the 
latencies next to nothing because it's a wired connection, no pass-through control, but you've got full control with the mouse and keyboard. Could easily use that for uh, video editing, no problem whatsoever. So we'll leave that there for now. We'll try a couple of different things, but DaVinci Resolve looking great. Okay, so DaVinci Resolve there. Let's try something different in here now. Drag the web browser across just to show that. So that's just um, Microsoft Edge I've got there. So if the resolutions are different per the screen, um, so that's why the window looks bigger. But we can use that. Let me go to YouTube on here and we'll watch a video back. So we'll go to YouTube and we'll jump into the use and DIY channel. You can see it's working fine there. You've got the playback. You can make that bigger and smaller, the window itself. Put it next to your screen, no problem. So you've got, almost got like a second screen just floating next to your other one which looks really really good to be fair so you've got no room for a second screen physically obviously you could just pop this next to it you can still see your original screen through pass through in really good quality um, and we can use this let's go to Houston DIY now to the channel play our most recent video the ninja looks cafe you can see there excellent frame rate really really good no latency so you can watch videos no problem we've got video editing no problem that's looking great okay so let's resize that now what we can do, we can actually move this window obviously wherever we want it to move it. And we, but we can go to full screen too. So let's jump into full screen, which makes it even bigger. You can change the um, curve or flat screen, depending on what viewing you like. You can also change the background dimness, darkness, whatever it is. So brighter or darker, so it like locks it in a little bit better, like cinema style. Come back out of full screen there. You can also drop this window anywhere we want it to, as I mentioned, so you can move this round. But the new um, meta, updates you can put windows anywhere in a 3d space now so we can put this anywhere in the 3d space we pull that out of the dock and drop this literally anywhere so we put this on the wall on the ceiling for potentially so you put it up on the ceiling you're working away there da -da -da -da, and look up to the ceiling to watch a YouTube video probably wouldn't do that but you could do it but we can put that anywhere around the room so put that on a wall there it's quite hard to position in here because it's quite a small room. But you can imagine that on the wall just behind you, no problem. What we could do is put it over there on that wall. If you've got like a YouTube playing on the wall over there, just to the side here, looking at your main screen, looking over there, really, really smart. So different ways, different flexibility of doing stuff. But obviously this can be anything, not just YouTube, not just DaVinci Resolve, it could be a Word document, a local video, anything like that. Really, really smart. Okay, all done now. That was just a super quick video showing you how to connect the Apple Mac Mini M4 to the Meta Quest 3. This, in theory, should work with all Mac Minis and all Apple Macs, to be fair. It's one of the devices I've not been able to test in my previous testing. I've tested PC, PS5, Android phone, Nintendo Switch, and PS4, and more as well. So we've tested loads on the channel. So this is kind of the next step in terms of testing on an Apple Mac device. Um, it should work on iPhone as well, in terms of the HDMI out using the USB-C port. Uh, it should work on iPads. I've just not been able to test it because I don't have any other Apple devices, unfortunately. So as I mentioned, I've used U a Ugreen capture card. Um, this is the Ugreen capture card here that I've used. Um, I do have other capture cards. What I will do is I'll list down the top three. I've got the Ugreen one, the J5 Procreate, and I've got one from Hagibis. Now the Hagibis one for me, generally, overall, is the best one. I chose this Ugreen one specifically for this video and for the Apple uh, Mac Mini because of that single cable. You've got USB-C into the capture card and then into USB-C again. You could, in theory, use the HDMI port, the full HDMI port on the back of the Mac Mini, output into there, into a capture card. I just thought this was a bit more streamlined uh, for the use case with the Mac Mini. So as I mentioned previously, I'll list all the equipment I've used below in the description. You can grab most of these capture cards and cables that I've used before on Amazon. I will link to those below. I will link to other videos as well that I've done on the MetaQuest 3 and using capture cards and using that HDMI link application. So if you've got any questions at all about the setup, just drop that in the comment section. I'll reply to all questions and comments. Anything extra you want to see in another video, more than happy to do a follow-up video to this. Uh, if you want to see some different applications being used, anything like that, drop it in the comment section and I will reply to all questions and comments. If you've liked the video, or at least it's been informative, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up. If not for any reason, give it a thumbs down, give it a dislike, let me know in the comment section. And if you want to follow the Houston DIY channel for more tech reviews, product reviews, more MetaQuest 3, more Mac Mini videos, and much, much more, hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the next one.